All right, it's that time. Pattern predictions looking out to the next 14 days. Actually, it's a day past that time. We're a day late, but not a dollar short. Thanks to Russ from Rochester. Reached out an email, said, I really look forward to pattern predictions. Keep them going. All right, Russ, here we go. Let's dive into the next two weeks. This one's for you and everybody else who loves winter and is saying, is there any sign of it? Okay, I'm going to show you the jet stream winds. Don't get bogged down in the details. That's my little caution, and I'm going to show you why and examine that here in a minute. We'll start out with the details in the short term and say, okay, well, this upcoming weekend, after getting some upslope snow returning to the mountains Thursday and Friday, you've got a disturbance coming in Sunday and a Monday. That one may bring some accumulating snow to northern New England. Could be a mix of rain when you come farther south. Then we get another disturbance. It comes in here middle of next week, probably the same type of setup out of that. And certainly when you look at the jet stream, you say, now, wait a minute. Hold on, we know cold is to the north. I don't like the look of this, middle of next week. Now it's gonna get mild again, middle of next week. Then if you go farther out, and again, if you were to get bogged down in the details, you'd look at this and say, no, I, this whole thing, it's just a bunch of gobbledygook. You're all over the place, it's convoluted. You've got the chance for warmth to come out ahead of these storms. And then you know what you'd do? You'd look to the surface weather pattern. You'd say, well, let's see, is there any sign of cold air with these storms at least? And you say, well, let's go to middle of next week. Oh no, it's still mild air that comes into play. Well, what about if we get to the end of the two-week period. Ah, oh, man, more storms that are kind of cranking up and bringing mild air. Look at that mild air in here on the 25th at uh, Christmas. Hold on. Hold on a second. Again, don't get bogged down in the details. I want to show you a reason that I at least think there's hope. This is not a guarantee, but I look at this and say, if you're a winter lover, uh, things can get very interesting toward the end of the month. Here's why. I'm going to switch over to what we call geopotential height. If you're not familiar with meteorology, presumably you watch these because you like to learn more about meteorology and the science of it, right? So basically, you know how cold air is more dense? So to get to 500 millibars of pressure level, which is less barometric pressure up in the sky, you don't have to go up very far in cold air as compared to warm air. So you could think about this coloring that we have here, and I put the black lines in to kind of illustrate it too, as average temperature in the atmosphere, warmer average temperature with the higher heights to reach 500 millibar pressure level. And then the lower heights would be where you have colder air. Watch what happens as soon as this weekend. Not here at home, okay? Here's the northern tier of the United States way down south. I'm talking up by the North Pole. Siberia has been the home to cold air so far this winter. Watch what happens as we get to this weekend. We start to get a big ridge that builds up near Siberia. It is going to pump some of that cold right across the North Pole and send it down into Canada. This is what you call cross-polar flow. A couple of things with cross-polar flow. It typically produces some of the coldest air that we get here because it is really just kind of this untouched cold that comes across the North Pole and then drops south. Second thing, oftentimes modeling underrepresents the strength of the cold when it is cross-polar flow. Now, as we go farther out in time, we get out to the middle of the next week, while we are likely warming up here at home, what's going on to the North North. A huge upper level storm, the polar vortex. This is almost more typical of a kind of standard polar vortex you'd see in winter instead of the recent ones we've seen that are fractured into a bunch of amoebas across the North Pole. So what we start to see here is with that polar vortex, a counterclockwise flow maintaining cross polar flow of pure air that's cold coming down across the North Pole, dropping down into North Central Canada across Hudson Bay. And look at this. It's it's open at least, it's available to come down to the Great Lakes in the northeastern United States. You also have another piece of Siberian cold that's developing another big low south of Alaska in the Aleutian Islands with a ridge developing over the western United States. If we go farther out in time, now you start to say, okay, wow, there's actually some pretty good cold that's up there. The question becomes, do you tap it? Well, you've got multiple disturbances that start coming into the flow as we get beyond the 20th. And with the cold air like that and that cross polar flow kind of fueling it, you have to look at that and say there is definitely hope for some excitement from the 20th of December onward all the way through Christmas and to the end of the calendar year when you look at this type of a setup. Is it guaranteed? No. But do I look at something like this? These are the high temperatures from our app that you'd find at Noises One Degree Outside Weather app for New England average temperatures. Yeah, I get the spike tomorrow. Danielle talks about the storm tomorrow with all the wind in the insights video. Yes, there's the warming we talked about for middle of next week, but definitely a downward trend that comes into that in terms of high temperatures toward the end of the period. You say, okay, can I line that up with precipitation? Well, Again, there's late this weekend, sunny and a Monday. Again, for a lot of us, probably rain showers. You saw the warmer air coming in. Okay, there's a little spike. But again, remember what I said. 
I should stand there, right? Don't get bogged down in the details because it's going to have to do with how that cross-polar flow evolves. And if it evolves, the timing is going to be all screwed up toward the end of the 14-day period, but so is the temperature profile, or I guess I should say it opens the door to that colder trend really kind of panning out with the potential for snow. Again, is it guaranteed? Nope. Uh, is it something that I all think we all should be kind of having our antenna up and watching really carefully? Yeah, I do, because I think there's the potential there for a lot going on toward the end of the month from, again, the 20th onward. So you can follow along, of course, every day. Get the app, Noises One Degree Outside, weather on the App Store and Google Play. I may be here next week telling you, ah, shucks, we came so close. <laughs> but then again, I may be here telling you, look at that cross-polar flow. All right, that's the way it looks for now. See you always at OneDegreeOutside.com.